guys, it's Sophie. So it's the 16th of May and the Man Booker International is upon us. Um, I haven't managed to read as many of them as I've wanted to, but I'm really enjoying reading the ones I have done so, so far, and I'm definitely going to finish the shortlist, um, so that would be exciting. But today's book that I wanted to chat with you about is A General Theory of Oblivion by Jose Eduardo Agalusa. This is a book that was originally written in Portuguese that is set in Angola. Um, I didn't know anything about Angola before I read this book um, and feel I know a little now um, but still don't know all that much about it so really interesting location. It's set on the brink of the Angolian independence um, and it's a time of really quite extreme conflict, um, fighting and um, really it's it's entering into wartime. And the novel's main character is a woman called Luda um, who essentially on, on the sort of advent of this um, conflict decides to brick herself into the apartment that she's living in and live off of the things in the apartment. So her and this albino um, German shepherd share this tiny space um, for as it turns out, a relatively long period of time. She's quite ingenious about how she's doing this. Um, so she has a small balcony that she turns into a farm. She manages to scoop chickens up from people um, who, who are sort of using them below and start a, sort of a farm um, in terms of eggs for herself. She learns how to tempt pigeons with diamonds. It, it's such a beautiful story. Um, I don't really know how to express it to you, how much I enjoy this and how beautiful this whole thing was. As some of you probably know, um, when I read I tend to have sort of a red pen in my hand um, and I'll quickly decide whether it's a book that's going to require the red pen or one that isn't going to require the red pen. So the red pen is a piece of particularly beautiful writing and I knew from page one that I was going to need this and so much of this book has my scribbles on it because it, the writing is stunning and the translation because of the fact this wasn't even written in English, the translation is, is really incredible. I'm going to read you a very short paragraph um, that's from the first chapter in the book, just to give you an example of the kind of writing. It's gorgeous throughout. One night, Ludo dreamed that beneath the streets of the city, under the respectable mansions in the lower town, there stretched an endless network of tunnels. The roots of the trees wound their way unimpeded down through the vaults. There were thousands of people living underground, sunk deep in mud and darkness, feeding themselves on whatever the bourgeois tossed into the sewers. Ludo was walking amid the throng. The men were waving machetes. They were striking their blades against one another and the noise echoed down the tunnels. One of them approached, brought his dirty face right up to the Portuguese woman's face and smiled. He whispered in her ear, in a voice that was deep and sweet, Our sky is your floor. So the writing, when it's sort of speaking about these, these really impactful, like really deep um, events is gorgeous and also Ludo's perception of the world, her perception of her isolation um, from society, her, uh, her loneliness is also captured so beautifully. So I'm just going to read you apart from her perception as well. Death circles around me, shows its teeth, snarls. I kneel down and offer it my bare throat. Come, come, come now friend, bite, let me go. Oh, you did come today and you forgot me. Night time. It's night time again. I've counted more nights than days. The nights then, and the clamour of the frogs. I open the window and see the lagoon. The night that is split in two. It rains. Everything overflows. At night it's as though the darkness were singing. The night rises up in waves and devours the buildings. I think once again of that woman to whom I returned the pigeon tall, prominent bones, with that slight disdain that which very beautiful women make their way through reality. She walks through Rio de Janeiro, along the bank of the Loega, I've seen in photographs, found several illustrated books about Brazil in the library. Cyclists pass her. The ones who let their gaze linger on her never come back. The woman is called Sara. They call her Sara. She looks like she's out of a canvas, from Mona Lagani. I think this book did um, a few things for me really, really well. Um, and this is why I, I feel as though I have to sort of say now, um, because the prizes I've seen, this is the one that I have preferred above all the others, um, and this is the one I would like to win. I think the vegetarian will win, um, but I would like for this one to win. I think this delivers so beautifully a sense of place, a sense of time. I think that it captures the culture in which um, the novel is set, as well as the individual's experience of that culture. I almost cried at parts of this book um, at depictions of war because the way they're described isn't um, isn't so stark and, and for me I, I sort of see those as factual things, I see those as, as one does on the news. Um, they're described beautifully 
and really, really real, <laughs> really real descriptions. Um, and that brought it to life. It brought something that, for me, I didn't even know existed to a point where it made me feel like I wanted to cry for those people. Um, and that's really impressive. It was gorgeous. The storyline, overarching the storyline of the country as well, was stunning and beautiful and heartfelt. And the story curls over itself and references things that you know from earlier and the characters, because um, there are characters outside of Ludo, but they sort of come in as you go. Um, they form a really strong network um, of, of the interconnectivity of people. It's just, it's just gorgeous. I, I would really, really highly recommend that you guys go and pick this book up. Um, regardless of whether or not this one wins the Man Booker International, I think it's an absolutely stunning book. It's one of those books that um, you read and you think, I'm really, I feel really special that I got to read this. So let me know if this has convinced you because I really hope it has. Um, and if it's completely put you off, then I don't know what I did wrong. Um, tell me so I won't do it again. Um, but yeah, I, I really love this book. I am pumped for the man booker tonight. Um, I have been on Twitter and I'm just checking everything out and making sure I have all the stuff I need to just watch it as it unfolds through Twitter. Um, and hopefully I'll see a few of you there. Um, for those of you who've hated these videos, for those of you who really don't care about the man booker at all, you just want to see the standard stuff, um, you know, do feel a bit relieved. Um, I've only got two left that I own and I will probably read those and they'll be my final reviews. Um, and then there'll be no more sort of man booker for a while. Um, although I'm I'm totally gonna do the 2016 long list, just as a warning. <laughs> because I really like the man booker. I hope that you're all well, I hope that you're having a lovely day. Um, in the UK it's been really sunny and gorgeous at the moment, so enjoy it while it lasts. Um, and I will see you soon in my next video, which won't be a man booker review. Bye-bye. <laughs>